Hey everyone, so in this video we should take a look at some concepts that give us an idea of some of the properties of the samples such as the sample mean, the sample variance and so on. Uh, just a quick recap, so the investigator is interested in p-variables, so we have p-variables and each of these p-variables are recorded on n units xik denotes the value for kth variable for ith unit. So the data can be represented in a matrix form. We, uh, call, we, denote as, uh, we, we call the matrix X and it has n rows and p columns. So first let's take a look at the mean. Remember we have p variables. So for basically we can calculate the average for each of the variables, right? So we have data for each of the p variables. So it's, this, is, this part is easy to do. Uh, so the formula is, uh, this is just a regular calculation of average of variables. So say we want to calculate mean for jth variable. So it's denoted by x bar j, bar denotes the mean, j denotes the variable. And you can see that this is summation i goes from 1 to n x i j by n so basically you can see that the j is fixed here that is because we are calculating mean for the jth variable so that is fixed and then we are varying so we are varying this value of i right so we are taking the average uh, of all of the elements in the jth column so we can take all of these means and put it in a vector and call it as x bar so note that the dimension of x bar is p cross 1. There is a transpose here. So a vector, if x bar is a p-dimensional vector, its, its dimensions are basically p cross 1. So it's a column vector. And this is the notation we are going to stick throughout this course. So let's take a look at the variance, right? So we can calculate the variance for each variable, we have p variables, we'll have p variances. The formula for variance of jth variable is this. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with this formula, so I won't go, uh, go through it in detail. So after the variance, next comes the covariance. So we have p variables again. So covariance between the kth and lth variable, right, is given in this fashion. Um, so I'm sure most of you are also familiar with the formula for covariance. So just some um, quick notes about covariance. So if I look at SKK, SKK just turns out to be the variance of variable K. <coughs> now if I look at uh, if, if I calculate SKL and SLK, it turns out that they will be the same. So what does covariance do? Covariance measures the degree of linear dependence between the two variables. What do I mean by linear dependence? Two variables are linearly uh, related, say X and Y are, are linearly related if their plot, scatter plot, look somewhat like this right basically the scatter plot lies along a straight line so large magnitude of covariance implies greater degree of linear dependence this cannot detect linear non-linear dependence what do i mean by non-linear dependence if this is x and this is y and if I plot the graph, right, of x and y, and if it looks like this, we can see clearly that there is a nonlinear relation between the two, right? So they're not unrelated, right? It's just that the relation is nonlinear. So the correlation or covariance cannot detect this kind of relation. It can only detect this kind of linear relation. It is affected by scale. What do I mean by scale? If I change the scale of the variables, the covariance between them will change. So we'll take a deeper look at some of these properties in a, uh, in a lab. 
So we have covariates that can be calculated between each pair of the variables that we have. And an easy way to uh, represent all of these covariances is in a covariance matrix, and it's given as this. So it's typically denoted by S. So remember, the population covariance was denoted by sigma. This is the sample covariance, and it's denoted by S. S1 square turns out to be the variance of the first variable. SP square variance of the pth variable. S1P is the covariance between the first and the pth variable. SP1 is the covariance between the pth and the first variable. Remember that S1P and SP1 are the same. That's because of this property. So this covariance matrix is a symmetric matrix. So next we take a look at the concept of correlation. So remember I said that uh, covariance is affected by scale, right? So this actually turns out to be a bit of a drawback and this can be overcome via correlation. So correlation is basically, co so if I want to calculate covariance, uh, co correlation between the kth and the lth variable, the formula is covariance between the kth and lth variable divided by the standard deviation of the kth variable times standard deviation of the lth variable. So note that the squares are missing in the denominator. In the denominator, we have the standard deviations. So again, all of these correlations can be arranged in a matrix. It's, in, it's the easiest way to represent all of, uh, represent the correlation information. So this is how you would write the correlation matrix. You denote it by capital R. So R1 square uh, is a correlation of variable one with itself. R1P is a correlation of a correlation between variable one and variable P. Again, this is going to be a symmetric matrix. Uh, so I'm going to just put the covariance matrix uh, for reference on this slide. And we have this matrix D. So I have this correlation matrix R, covariance S, and this diagonal um, matrix D. So try out this exercise. Calculate this D um, raised to minus uh, 1 by 2. That is inverse of the square root of D times S. So do this multiplication, right? So S is this. And this is the D matrix. And you will see that you obtain the correlation matrix. So what you get is this formula, another way of calculating the co correlation matrix. And this can be handy when we uh, code for it, right? So when you're writing codes, it's important for you to remember the formula and be able to execute or it in the shortest or the easiest possible way. So this formula could be handy while coding. So uh, just a little bit of a <coughs> discussion on the square root of a matrix, right? So we know how to take square root of numbers. How do we take square root of matrices? So a square root of a matrix A is denoted by square root of A, right? This is just a notation. So square root of a matrix A has to be a matrix such that if I multiply it with itself, I get A back. So if you think about it, it's similar to multiplying numbers, right? Uh, so square root of 4 times square root of 4 will give us 4, right? So uh, square root of A times square root of A should give us A, right? So the square root matrix should satisfy this property. Uh, keep in mind that it is not the same as taking square root of each element in the matrix. If I have A1, A2, a3, A4, if this is A, square root of A need not be square root of A1, square root of A2, square root of A3, square root of A4, right? This is not necessarily always true. It is true if A is a diagonal matrix. So our life is easy. We can easily calculate square root of A if A is a diagonal matrix matrix.
So if A is a diagonal matrix, right? So I'm only writing the diagonal elements. All the off diagonal elements are zero here. Square root of A is just this, right? For diagonal, remember, we can take square root of each of the elements in the matrix. A inverse turns out to be, again, inverse of each of the elements in the matrix. And um, square root of A inverse is just this matrix, right? So you know now how to calculate, uh, you know how to calculate D raised to minus half. So you should be able to verify the formula that I gave in the previous slide. So what are some of the properties of the correlation matrix? Correlation of a variable with itself is always one. So RKK is one. Correlation always lies in the interval minus 1 to plus 1. Minus 1 and plus 1 are included in this interval. It's a closed interval. Minus 1 indicates a perfect negative relation between the two variables. What do I mean by a negative relation? If I have variables x and y, if I were to plot their graph, it would be this line with a negative slope. Plus 1 indicates a perfect positive relation between the uh, two variables. So x and y, if I were to plot their graph, it will be the state, it would be a straight line with a positive slope. Zero correlation indicates a lack of linear relation. It is not affected by a change of scale. <laughs> So remember that covariance also indicated uh, something about linear relationship, but um, it's not clear that if the, co if the covariance between the two variables is one, and if covariance between some other pair of variables is two, uh, which two variables are more linearly related, it, it's, it's hard to say there. Correlation has these really convenient properties, so it's um, common to use correlation to talk about linear relationship between two variables. Hmm. So if the variables are independent, what does it mean that the variables are independent? So all my folks who have studied 350 know exactly what the definition of independence is. But intuitively speaking, independence means that there is no relation whatsoever between the two variables. Okay, no linear relation, no non-linear relation, no kind of relation. So if the variables are independent, then they are uncorrelated, right? So if the variables are independent, they are not allowed to have a, any sort of relation, including a linear relation, and hence they are uncorrelated. But the converse is not true, right? What do I mean by that? It's possible two variables have relation that looks like this and they are they could be uncorrelated here right but they're not independent because there is a certain relationship between the two variables so we will take a, a deeper look at this concept of nonlinear relation change of scale uh, in the in, in in the upcoming lab so that is all for uh, this video i'll see you in the next one Bye.